Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, all the training camps. Everybody is in right now as we speak. And tomorrow, the Dallas Cowboys will get on the field. Hope you didn't fall for any of those clips people have had. If you watch Twitter, people are actually showing clips saying Dak went 20 of 23 and all that. And Brandon Cooks is looking great and this, that, and the other. Don't fall it for that. That's past, past stuff, guys. So, yeah. But at least... We'll be talking about practice. In the meantime, until we have our glory hole press conference, which is delayed till Saturday because Jerry Jones was dealing with legal concerns, we have C.D. Lamb. And and correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. C.D. is the only player, only the Dallas Cowboys, have a player who's holding out and not at practice at the facilities with the team. I could be wrong, but see, Brandon Ayuk, he's there. He's there at the facilities. We're hearing that Trent Williams is holding in as well and looking for more money. We've heard, of course, that Matthew Stafford was holding in, and he ended up getting additional money on his contract. We know that Amari Cooper was holding out but got more money and got him in camp. And we know, um, let's see, what, who else did I miss? Who else? Did, did I miss anybody else? But C.D. Lamb is the only player who is not with his team and holding out for a new contract. Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara is looking for another contract, but he's there at the facilities with the team. So I, I'm, I'm getting kind of tired of bashing the Dallas Cowboys for lack of activity. And after going on the Dan Salio show, um, and I, there, there was not much I could do to defend the Cowboys. There really was not much I can do. Maybe tomorrow when the players get on the field, I'll be able to feel better because we'll actually see some of the young people, the young players and stuff starting to get, you know, gel and get together and do stuff. But right now, all we got is the fact that the Cowboys have done absolutely positively nothing. Let's listen to the latest update here, and then we'll talk about it some more. Cowboys, they're back in camp, but all pro wide receiver C.D. Lamb not among them, of course, creating some concern for Dallas. Now, Lamb's holdout should not come as a surprise after he skipped mandatory meeting camp in June. And so we come back here now with Adam Schefter. Just how far apart, Shefty, would you say Lamb's reps are and the front office is there for the Cowboys? Yeah, Shay, they're not close right now. And the fact that C.D. Lamb is not reporting to training camp with the rest of the team tells you how far apart they are. He believes that it's in his best interest to stay away from training camp, and you don't often get holdouts. Last summer, we had Nick Bosa, we had Zach Martin in Dallas. Zach Martin stayed away, wanting to get a sweetened enhanced deal, which eventually he did, and now C.D. Lamb is taking a page out of their playbook, and it makes sense when you look at it because the wide receiver market has exploded. And if and when C.D. Lamb gets done a new deal, it figures to be north of $30 million a year on average. Let's call it hypothetically a four-year, $120 million deal. Do you think it much matters that C.D. Lamb would accrue tens of thousands of dollars of fines by not showing up to training camp this summer a day. if he signs a deal well in excess of $100 million? He's making a statement to the Dallas Cowboys that he is not happy with the state of negotiations. And really, this one's a hard one to figure because the wide receiver market has been laid out there for everybody to see. We know how important C.D. Lamb is to this football team. It should be up to the Dallas Cowboys and C.D. Lamb to figure out a deal. We probably could figure out the average per year. Not hard to do. And yet these two sides are far enough apart that C.D. Lamb is not showing up to training camp, which is not 
how Dallas wants to begin a season that's critical for the long-term success of this franchise. Okay, so there as Shefty said, Brandon Ayuk is showing up to training camp, just not participating, so he avoids that fine. Lamb not showing up faces a daily fine of $50,000 that cannot be rescinded for every day missed in training camp, according to the CBA. But like Shefty says, maybe when all is said and done, the money doesn't matter at all. Shefty, we'll talk to you in a little bit. Let's say hello now, though, to Lewis Riddick. And, mm-hmm. and Lou, I want to get your Haterade take on the Lamb situation because this is not the only contract that the Dallas Cowboys have at the top of their mind. Dak Prescott. Scott, Micah Parsons, but how imperative is it that they figure out something with CeeDee Lamb as training camp gets underway? I'll say, look, they have no shot. They have no shot without CeeDee Lamb. You cannot replace his 135 receptions last year with anybody on the roster. Nobody even comes close. And look, as we've alluded to, like this is a situation here with CD that Dallas knew was coming. Dallas saw the wide receiver market formulating. They knew exactly where the money was going to be on an average per year basis, on a guaranteed basis, guaranteed signing basis. They knew what was coming down the line. They know. Uh, it, this uh, is what a hold but... in tells you that you're still not very close on getting a new deal. A hold out like this tells you that maybe Dallas has totally misjudged what they thought maybe yeah. C.D. Lamb would accept, expect, or accept in terms of contract structure, and they are way, way, way far apart. And so, look, this guy always was going to be prioritized, that being C.D. Lamb, and rightfully so. Wide receiver is the second most important position on a football team now, outside of quarterback. For various reasons, I've been talking about it. Uh, because of the I'm fact not- that these guys score points, you know, quick, more quickly than anyone on the roster, And number two, other teams, other players rather, want to go to teams that have high-flying offenses, that have high-flying scoring capabilities. So it really has a trickle-down effect, and fans want to come see players like C.D. Lamb play. Dallas knows that. Jerry Jones knows that better than anybody. He understands the the business of football. He understands that Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb put people in the seats, Mm -hmm. make people buy merchandise, make people buy suites. And for you not to have a better plan for this young man in terms of having him in the fold at this point in time is just wild to me. It's wild. And C.D. Lamb is wild all statement, fans just too. as Adam said, a definite statement. Lewis, it feels like every offseason we have these discussions about different position groups. Last year it was the year of the running back, and this year now it feels like we're talking about wide receivers left and right. Because All right, so we'll leave it right there. And, and I actually did make a mistake. I was checking while I was listening to this. Actually, Hassan Reddick is the only other player who is actually not at the facility. So there's the holdout where you get fined $50,000 a day, and then there's the hold in where you are there, you're just not going to practice. And there's also Tua, who is limited in practice, as well as Jordan Love. Jordan Love is basically not going to practice until he gets a contract as well. So, in in other words, the Cowboys and C.D. Lamb are not anywhere close if he is holding out completely. And it seems like the Cowboys don't learn they just don't learn because we've been through this from emmett smith to zeke elliott uh zach martin we just continue to do the same thing that we don't want to pay our stars now the problem here for the cowboys in my mind is this because you don't have thunder and lightning like you used to Zeke and Tony Pollard, where you had you know your your, your scat back and of course you know your bludgeon back and things. Zeke Elliott's still kind of that bludgeon back, but I don't see him being the guy that's got that same burst as it had before. Rico, you know, Rico is a good back, but he's got to stay healthy and things. But with possibly two rookie offensive linemen starting and seeing our offensive line now rated not as high as it used to be where we're not sure if Tyler Guyton is going to be ready to start or if we're going to have Chimo Igoto as our starting left tackle. What you're going to rely on is quick hitting passing plays to try and stretch out the field. This is going to be a must. The Cowboys are going to need to stretch out the field. We're not going to be able to just line up and say, Zeke, run the ball on first and second down. We are going to need to use the passing plays as an elongated, basically, running game. 
We're going to need to be able to go one, two, boom, hit the ball. And if you don't have C.D. Lamb, a guy that you have to fear about going all the way, and Brandon Cooks is our number one, or if you have C.D. Lamb who holds out throughout all of the summer and stuff and then is not in shape in the same way Zeke Elliott was, you are literally throwing away your season. You need him there, working with the team, getting this offense ready to spread the field out. If they can do that, if CeeDee Lamb and then Brandon Cooks and Jalen Tolbert and crew, along with Jake Ferguson, that we can boom, 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 you know, death by a thousand cuts. If we can spread the ball around that way, then that's going to prevent teams from being able to put eight men in the box. And then when you run, you will be more effective. Um, I don't know what the plan is here. It's hard to be excited as a Dallas Cowboy fan right now um, when you see this lack of activity on the by the team that you figure that we would have gotten something going, that we would have made some kind of move. Maybe the move is they really are just not going to do any moves. And to me, that is setting your season up for failure. And maybe, ultimately, that is the plan. So... I will also say, there's the old saying, it's darkest before the dawn. And maybe we're just going through this dark period right now, and all of a sudden out of left field, boom, we'll hear about deals that are getting done, and we'll get the excitement, and we'll get a boost from activity finally happening. I hope it happens soon because it's hard out here for a pimp. I'm Mark Holmes, and... uh, I just want to get something done.